All right, welcome everybody that's watching. If anybody is watching, I don't know how this is going to do, but I figured I'd come out and live stream a little bit tonight. So Ole Miss, a 73-58 to winner of the Alcorn State Braves. First half, kind of rough. Um, but the defense looks like it's there. This is a team that I don't mo know that much about. I'm watching this just like everybody else watching them um, going on, and I just wanted to see exactly how they look. I almost went into this game blind because I didn't want any pre preconceived notions. One thing is clear is they missed Deshaun Ruffin. Um, obviously, him not being in and two freshmen running the point, that was a struggle at the beginning of the game. In the second half, shots started to fall, and they were able to um, pull away and win the game relatively comfortable. Now, I did say earlier, I think this team might be like a Kermit Davis type team um, from MTSU. I think this is what he's falling back into. This team, every possession in the second half with Alcorn State going down the um, court was like going to the dentist. Now, you don't know if you're going to score because as um, Craig Murray's asking, when is Davis going to recruit some shooters? I don't know. You have Matthew Morrell. I think Ruffin could be a guy like that. I think T.J. Caldwell will eventually be that guy. His stroke looked very good. I thought Amari Abram um, played a little bit out of control as a true freshman might from time to time. Um, but overall, it was a first game. That That's how we can do that. It was a first game. They're going to get better from game one to game two. They won by 15 points. The first half is not an indictment. They really did not play well offensively. And Alcorn State was able to stay in the game. In the NIT, Alcorn State made the NIT last year and was tied at halftime with Texas A&M. Um, so this is not a rare thing. But like I said, freshman point guards, um, they didn't shoot the ball particularly well. Um, but they won the game. That's all that matters because at the end of the year, whenever they're doing resumes, they're not going to look at that first half. They're not going to say, well, we would like to let Ole Miss into the tournament. But the first half of their first game was not good at all. They're not going to do that at all. So as this goes, they're going to they're going to be all right. I mean, I liked Morrell in the second half. He shot the ball pretty well. T.J. Caldwell impressed me. He showed he had a little bit of an it. Now, Amari Abram got the start over TJ Caldwell, which means, which tells me that Abram probably had some jitters in his first collegiate game. So I think he's going to get better too. Deshaun Ruffin, if everybody remembers, like struggled early in his freshman year before he got injured. Um, so I liked Miles Burns early. He, he flashed the kid from Loyola. Um, the McKinnis. I think played early, but he didn't play much. I don't know if he got hurt or if something was going on. They just went to um, Akuba. I, that I'm not sure about. I like James White. There's some pieces there. You know, Jamin Brakefield, you didn't even really notice in the game. So there's some pieces. Ty Fagan played a ton last year, played one minute tonight. So obviously this team is set up a little bit differently than they were last year. They're going to have to grow because of all the transfers, as we've seen on the football side of the field. Um, but it, it kind of is what it is. And, I mean, I don't want to go too much on it, but, yeah, it's one of those things. They shot free throws better in the second half. They were 14-18 in the second half as compared to 6-10. of 10. Both, both the halves, they missed four shots, but they got to the line 18 times in the second half. Uh, Matthew Morrell was volume shooting tonight. He was 5 of 12 from 3, 7 of 18 overall, um, ended up with 20 points. TJ Caldwell, um, 4 of 6 shooting and um, 1 of 2 from 3. So, anyway, it was a serviceful win. In a game one, Matthew Morrell probably, they probably didn't want to play him 33 minutes. Um Miles Burns played 29, so those are obviously guys that have flashed in practice, so you can count on those. Next high um, minutes was Amari Abram, and Theo Akuba 
at 24 and 21 minutes. And then you get down into the teens. Robert Allen had 21 minutes. By the way, the second half, he came back, was fantastic. And um, that was something we can see. We'll see if they get better Friday. I mean, that's all it is. It's one game at a time. Everybody looks at this from a football mentality. This team's about getting better. And they need to probably be 10-2-ish and two-ish at the end of non-conference whenever they start. So that's my opinion on that. I mean, Ole Miss won 73-58. It was a game they were supposed to win. It was a game they did win. So I don't know if there's going to be too much of a need for teeth gnashing going on. Now, if you guys want to talk about the Ole Miss-Bama game, we can do that for a couple of minutes as well. Um, Morrell needs as many shots as Judkins has carries, Craig Murray says. Um, that is absolutely the case. Um he, he was the guy. I think that'll change a little bit when Ruffin's the guy. And then you have Caldwell and you have Abram. You have a chance for different looks on the field. Amari Abram kind of reminds me, if you're my age or above, which is in the mid-40s, Jalen Rose in college. That, that left-handed shot, the way it hit the rim, it, it kind of looked like that. Um, we've got John Avery tomorrow morning. Um, we're going to play 10 minutes or 15 minutes of his interview. And then tomorrow night, we're going to release the whole interview, which is like 30 minutes long. It's really cool. He actually um, refers to Alabama as the luckiest team in the world um, and makes fun of Nick Saban for never smiling. So John, John Avery was good. He's going to be the guest analyst for the postcast on Saturday. Oh, I, I'm always... Rev fan, excited to hear Gary Danielson. He's terrible, but that just means we're on CBS. Zach Evans does, he needs to have a breakout game. That that We've been waiting for it to happen all year. Um, Yeah, he needs to have a breakout game. And this is, yeah, this is going to be a different team with Ruffin running the point. He creates for himself and others. There wasn't much of that. I think the inexperience at the point position with TJ Caldwell and Amari Abram kind of built that up. We had Jason Jordan, which talked about Abram and Caldwell as kind of dudes um, going forward. So he said we, they would both be fan favorites of Ole Miss fans. They obviously played a good bit tonight, so it seems they're going to be really good. I'm telling you, we are building towards just a potentially fantastic weekend. Do you know the last time Ole Miss played Alabama – as um, with both team at least ranked 10th in one of the polls. Does anybody know that? The last time that happened. Well, the correct answer is the 1964 Sugar Bowl. And that was coming off the last time that Ole Miss won the SEC in 1963. They played Alabama in the 64 Sugar Bowl. Alabama and Bear Bryant won that game 12-7. to um, But that was the last time both teams were ranked in the top 10 at the time of the game, um, but in at least one poll. And for people that dig symbolism, that game being what it was, I don't think people need to understate this. But that was the first game towards the downward spiral. We have a chance to rectify that situation completely Saturday and win this game and go up for another as, to return to an SEC championship. You play a game like that going out, you have to play a game like that to get back. It's kind of interesting symbolism. So Craig Murray says, I can't believe it's basketball season again already. Yeah, that is absolutely nuts. I wasn't even sure I was going to live stream tonight. Um, because I was like, okay, it's football season. I've got to do the live stream Saturday. We've got John Avery. We're doing all of this stuff. Um, but now I was like, you know what? I need to do the live stream. It's the opening of the college basketball season. There's freshmen. There's so many unknowns. There's people that are probably going to want to see it and talk about it. And Ole Miss, it might be a smaller base than some SEC schools, has S basketball-only fans. So they need a place um, to follow the game as well. So that's pretty cool. 
I, I'm really excited about the game this weekend. We had I had interviewed Jake Thomas from Tide Talk Live today. Um, that interview will go up Wednesday, and he talked about it, it's just a mess right now. The coordinators and the um, actual assistant coaches. Nobody really has a problem with Saban that's sane, but the coordinators and all this, they they have a huge problem with those guys. Um, that'll be an interesting thing to look at. I think I'm going to do a video tomorrow. It's about the, let's say the unsung keys, because everybody knows the keys of the game, because we started talking about this last week. But the keys to the football game that are unsung, things like fast start, play clean, no big momentum swings, things like that. That That's what we talk about tomorrow. And, of course, John Avery as well. Um, Wednesday, we will have SEC After Dark with Jake Thomas, Corey Burton, and um, Jeb Beecham on the Y'all's Conference Network YouTube page. We're going to do that um, for an hour and a half of that live stream Wednesday night. Um, Corey Burton comes on the show tomorrow at about 4 o'clock and talks about our run game. Mbala does look tough. He's he's a guy that um, Craig Murray said that said that Mbala looks tough. He, he's a guy that um, I want to see against better competition. I want to see if he is that looks that tough whenever he has to go against the Tennessee big. Um, I think that's his step. Now he came from Texas Tech, so he's been in these battles before. So I mean, there's some players they got to figure out the rotation with the basketball team at the moment. And I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty okay with what I saw tonight. I'm not okay with the first half, but it was just the first half. Anybody that complains about a period in sports, like the message board warrior posting after the first quarter is like we're doomed, fire everybody. I I, I can't deal with that. Um, second half was fine. I think this team, this basketball team, looks a lot like. Um, the Rod Barnes, Barnes era, and I don't mean the bad Rod Barnes part. I mean towards the good Rod Barnes part. The Justin Reed, the um, Aaron Harper, the David Sanders, that era. Um, and where the defense is going to be responsible for a large part of the offense. But the defense is always going to travel. It, they're going to make it to where it's like pulling teeth to score on them. And every possession is going to be an absolute war. And whenever you mess up, there's easy baskets on the other end. But defensively, this team, I think, is pretty good. But we'll see. Like I said, this is an NIT team. So, um, uh, meaning Alcorn State. They, they went to the NIT last year, so this was a decent team. There was a couple of players they hit some threes, but whenever they got in and mixed it around, um, they – it just they just it was almost like they were overwhelmed inside the paint and that is something really cool to see if you want to talk about rim protectors and things like that I think I think this team is got them in spades honestly um there's vulnerable tonight to the three I don't know if that was because of their aggressive I don't know if that was because of communication a bust I don't know exactly how that went down, but we'll see if that gets fixed as well. This team did what they were supposed to do. Um, it's really hard to say that they didn't. They they play Florida Atlantic in Oxford um, on Veterans Day, Friday, Friday night. Um, I do not know if I'm going to do a live stream that day because we're doing a day of fun. The game's at 6 o'clock, so maybe... Maybe I'll be back in time to um, do that. I do not know. Um, but I'm planning on going to Magic Kingdom with my wife um, to do a little Disney World and eat at the Liberty Tree Tavern and stuff like that on Veterans Day. This That's our day. Um, so we celebrate it pretty good. So we've got that. We've got the Alabama game this weekend. Um. I don't know. Um, pizza bowl should be coming up fairly quickly if it hasn't already. Um, so, yeah, I mean, should be pretty good. 
Um, I do want to thank everybody for coming into the chat and talking about it and hanging out. And um, we will do this for basketball games. The ladies, let me get the score of the ladies game. Um, they played Kennesaw State. They were a 70 to 60 winner over Kennesaw State. They play Thursday against Southeast Missouri State. Um, that's the Red Hawks, the Cardinals. I'm, I'm not sure what they are, but they're building up um, as it goes. Once the, once they get to um, Thanksgiving week, they go to a basketball tournament in the Bahamas, which makes sense with Coach O. So there's some good players. Big Ten Challenge, they play Oklahoma. We'll see. This was an NCAA tournament team last year. We'll see exactly what Coach O can do with her ladies um, moving forward, but 70 to 60, they, t they looked like they played pretty hard. Anyway, we're going to get out of here. Thank you very much for tuning in. And, um, honestly enjoy this week, get hyped up for the Alabama game, go to the game. If you can make tons of noise, go to the Florida Atlantic game the night before, if you're in town and have to stay in a hotel, make lots of noise. Um, it should be a lot of fun, but anyway, thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care.